So uh, my name is Claudio, or Clouds. I'm from uh, the Linux Wireless Community Network. And uh, I was really uh, th thinking about canceling this talk because it's about something that doesn't work. But <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> but I'm here. So here we are. So I don't know if any of you know about multipath TCP. It's uh, an extension of TCP that is meant to exploit several paths uh, at the same time to aggregate bandwidth or to, or to have some resilience. And it needs to be supported on the endpoints. You cannot have multipath TCP if this doesn't work on the server and the client. Okay? So, with this in mind, uh, as I told you, I am from a wireless community network that is called Linux. We are from Italy. We have uh, some meshes all around the country. Even there is something that is almost in Slovenia. <laughs> so we have, I think, some nodes that are like uh, between Milan, Slovenia and Linux that are like uh, contended nodes. <laughs> yeah, there are some nodes that are in Slovenia. Uh, not really. There are some nodes that are in Italy and, are, and that are from Milan, Slovenia. Not yet the contrary, but we will conquer the, the we will pass the border and conquer also there. <laughs> so this is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a part of the Rome network, the mesh. We run OSR. And here we have some people from uh, all over the country. This picture was done when we did a, a meeting that is the Linux day, we call it. Okay. <laughs> so in Linux Rome, uh, we are using IPv6. We are auto providing ourselves IPv6. And uh, we have native connection, native addresses, and we had some fun in choosing the addresses <laughs> in hexadecimal, like boss, baba, beef, b, <laughs> cafe, this is mine, yeah. <laughs> this is Dio, this is over at church, yeah, and yeah, who knows Italian? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, because yeah, Fuselab is the association that hosts our meetings. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you're right. the The fact is that uh, Linux Rome is not an association, it's not a foundation, it's not anything. We are just an informal group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, we had some fun like that. And so the result is that we have a network that is supporting IPv4 and IPv6 at the same time. We are going to uh, IPv6 through BGP peerings and we're going to uh, through to the internet through IPv4 uh, by BGP peerings as well, but also through DSLs. So uh, the result is that we have multipath routing already in place without having to do any source routing or source specific routing. Okay, we just have IPv6 routing table and IPv4 routing table. So uh, when we use IPv6, we go through one path. When we use IPv4, we go through another path. OK? So uh, what we thought is that perhaps if we don't want to change the final hosts uh, by developing some multipath VPNs, perhaps we could exploit uh, 
together the IPv6 and IPv4 connectivity to have some bandwidth aggregation and some uh, resiliency. At least this is what I thought. So uh, uh, I searched, I googled a bit, and I found this paper, which, uh, of which I'm not an author and of which I don't know any of the authors. But it's, it looks like the, that idea. It is Binder, a system to aggregate multiple internet gateways in community networks. Wow. So what did they do? Our range bands were the same, bandwidth aggregation, load balancing, and fault tolerance. And they use OpenVPN over multipath TCP and loose source routing to choose the gateways. Okay? So uh, it's just plain OpenVPN because we don't need source routing uh, to port this to Linux. This is more or less the the, the architecture of Binder. That is, there are some clients in these networks, some access points, and then some relays that run multiple TCP that talk to an external aggregating server that also talks multiple TCP. So you have these connections going through the gateways of the community, all the subflows of multiple TCP, and then also these subflows are aggregated at a server that has high bandwidth on the internet, and then the addresses are NATed, and there you go. Okay, so this is more or less their architecture. So I don't know if any of you have read this web page on the internet. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've talked to some people, and it, it looks like a popular web page. I think it's one of the uh, first results when you Google TCP over TCP, and there is no, not much on this topic. So uh, the thing is that when you have two TCPs, one inside another, the upper TCP assumes that the lower layers will not handle packet loss. So it will try to handle it itself. But if the uh, lower TCP is also trying to do the same, then there are some effects that may amplify if, uh, there are some, if the timers are in a particular configuration. So uh, this is bad. And we also know that TCP over wireless is a bad idea because TCP when there is a, some packet loss, TCP will assume that there is some congestion. So TCP over TCP over wireless <laughs> 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 looks like a very bad idea. <laughs> and as I learned <laughs> yesterday, or yeah, it was, the source routing is deprecated, so this is a limitation of band. And also they only emulated this thing. Uh, so I... <laughs> yeah, I don't know them. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, the thing is that you just need a multipath TCP kernel and open VPN. So if they succeeded, let's try it. It's just a matter of configuration. It's not really implementing anything. You just put these things and just try it, OK? So uh, I asked at my job if I could work on this, and they accepted. So I started building these kind of test beds. Uh, you have a client, you have an access point that runs multiple TCP, you have two, two uplinks somehow, a uh, server that aggregates, that also runs, runs multiple TCP and that aggregates the connections and then NATs, and then the server that you want to reach from the client. Okay? So, I started by emulating this thing in GNS3. 
And then I also built a small a real world test bed with a laptop and a remote server uh, with a 3G key and uh, using a Wi Fi connection at the same time. And I tried OpenVPN over TCP, ThinkVPN over TCP, B2D, SSH minus w, minus w. I don't know if any of you know SSH W. Uh, it's, it builds some Toon devices, and you can have a VPN over SSH. A real VPN, not like a proxy, proxy thing, but it, it turns out, uh, it really creates some interfaces. And Socket. <laughs> okay, so I tried a lot of stuff, and I didn't get it to work in any way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, okay, the animation fucked up. <laughs> so, as I told you, I did only some pre very preliminary tests. And to uh, work around the TCP and TCP issue, I just tested with UDP. So I didn't put TCP inside the, the VPN, just, you just started generating UDP. So, the thing is completely unstable. Sometimes it chooses the, the link with the less latency. Uh, doesn't really take, uh, take into account the bandwidth. Uh, except in emulation, sometimes the, both links are used, but uh, they are slow. They are as slow as the slowest link. Or no, as the link with the uh, smallest latency. So it's, uh, it's a mess, it doesn't work, but of course I would, when I thought about this talk, I would, like, I would have liked to show you some numbers and graphs, but yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's even worth investigating further because we're doing TCP over TCP over wireless and stuff. Please? There's something called the multipass TCP proxy, where you get one TC normal TCP connection, and it transparently breaks it apart in a multipass TCP connection to connect to a multipass TCP aware server or to a different proxy that does it in reverse. So in theory, instead of doing VPN, you could try to find a source for such a proxy and skip the whole VPN thing. I saw there is a TCP interceptor. Perhaps we're talking about the same thing? Yeah, yeah, maybe okay. Like yeah okay, but uh, so it's wrong anyway to have VPNs using TCP in TCP. It was try worth trying just because it was easy to try. So uh, Shall we migrate all operating systems to multipath TCP? Is that feasible, really? Shall we stop using TCP sockets and move uh, multipath support to application layer on, uh, in all applications? <laughs> <laughs> so why not an UDP-based multi multipath VPN? Uh, so it could re get rid of all the issues I told you about without needing to change the hand, hand hosts that might be also, I don't know, legacy telephones or whatever. And perhaps it could be based uh, on some source code that tries to do the same thing, like MP Marsh, <laughs> of which we have some one author here, <laughs> or uh, Quick, or whatever. So that's all. Thank you. <laughs>